We want to talk about the, the cardiac conduction system, talk about the origins and the anatomy uh, of the cardiac conduction system. Uh, the components that we're going to discuss are the sinoatrial node, the AV conduction system, which uh, includes not only the AV node, but also the penetrating bundle and bundle branches, and then the peripheral system, the Purkinje uh, fibers. So the sinoatrial node develops from sinus venosus myocardium, <clears throat> which gets added to the primitive heart tube uh, around week four to five. These uh, derive from uh, caudal second heart field cells that express TBX18. Uh, and interestingly, unlike uh, virtually all other myocardium that gets added to the heart tube once it differentiates, uh, these cells don't express NKX25, which is, of course, one of the uh, major um, tr transcription factors involved in organizing the cardiac transcription cascade. So these, this is a bit unusual type of uh, myocardium that gets added. It gets added around the inflow veins and around the sinus venosus. You can see this is a Carnegie stage 19 embryo section, a human embryo. Uh, and you can see this is all um, sinus venosus myocardium here. And the, the sinoatrial node develops at the junction between the supervena cava and the working myocardium of the right atrial wall here. Uh, there are a couple of other factors that are very important uh, for imparting sinus node character to this area. One is uh, the uh, short stature homeobox uh, factor two, uh, SOX2, as well as uh, T-box transcription factor, TBX3. And this we'll see is important throughout the cardiac conduction system. These induce the characteristic features of the sinoatrial node, particularly the slow con connections, connection 30.2, but also uh, HCN4, uh, hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide gated potassium channel four, which is very important for imparting automaticity to the uh, sinoatrial node. This is responsible largely for the so-called funny current uh, that uh, causes uh, periodic depolarization. So this gets added here. The reason that we, there, there's sinus venosus tissue on the other side of the atrium too, on the left atrial side. The reason we don't see normally sinus nodes developing there is that PIDX2, which is the left-sided factor that imparts left-sided character to the left atrium and left-sided structures, uh, PIDX2 interferes with the uh, activity of SHOX2 and, and TBX3 and so prevents a sinus node normally from developing on the other side. So the anatomy of the node is shown very nicely in this paper by Suyin Ho. Uh, <clears throat> you can see it's located at the junction between the supervena cava and the right atrial appendage, the sulcus terminalis on the outside or the crista terminalis on the inside. The head part is here relatively anterior, uh, and then the tail develops more laterally and inferiorly as you go around in the sulcus terminalis. The node itself, the histology uh, of the node, um, it has dense connective tissue throughout it with small uh, weakly staining myocytes in here that don't have much contractile apparatus. It has a central artery, the, the sinus node artery that runs generally through the middle of it. It looks very different from a uh, typical working myocardium that you can see over here in the right atrial wall. This is superior cava and down into the right atrium. This is the epicardium out here, endocardial surface in here. And you can see the node is typically uh, uh, located in a subepicardial uh, uh, location. And then there are some transitional uh, cells in between the node and working myocardium that sort of share characteristics of, of both. Most of the time, the blood supply for the node comes from a very proximal branch of the right coronary, uh, often the first branch, the anterior atrial artery, but uh, maybe a quarter or more of the time, the supply comes from the left circumflex artery and then a smattering of other patterns. If we look inside the right atrium, this is a solitus right atrium or a usual type of, uh, of uh, situs. Uh, you can see the orifice of the superior vena cava here. The crista is here, it would actually reflect over on this side. This is the rest of the appendage. You can see the pectinate muscles. So this is the location for the sinus node inside a solitus. It would be over here to the left of the cava. 
This is an inverted atrium. You can see it's just a mirror image of the solitus atrium. And here the um, crista is to the right uh, of the inflow of the, of the superior vena cava coming in. So just mirror images of each other. In heterotaxy syndromes, we know there can be uh, uh, differences in the uh, sinoatrial node in, in, in asplenia or so-called right atrial appendage isomerism. We often have two nodes and this is a, a heart uh, with uh, asplenia. And you can see we're looking in from the left side here, there's just this little strand of atrial tissue, which is fairly characteristic of these hearts. The superior vena cava comes in, well, the left one comes in here. And you can see there's a well-developed crista here with pectinate muscles coming into it. Now we're looking on the other side of the atrium. We're looking, this is the, the left side of the structure. This is the right side. So here you can see there's a complete common AV canal with an inferior bridging leaflet, superior bridging leaflet here. There's also a well-developed crista in this side of the atrium. Here you can see pectinate muscles coming into it. So bilateral sinus nodes, which is relatively common in asplenia type of heterotaxy. Whereas in polysplenia, the sinus node often doesn't develop very well. So it may be hard to find, uh, or if it's present, it's quite hypoplastic. Um, this is probably because of differences is in expression of the left-right uh, determination features, particularly PIDX2. Uh, here we think PIDX2 get maybe expressed on both sides, whereas here it isn't expressed anywhere, so it doesn't suppress node formation on the left. Here it, it interferes with node formation both on both sides. At least that's one possibility. The other place where we see differences in the location of the node is in left-sided juxtaposition of the atrial appendages. Here you can see uh, the two appendages. There's the normally positioned left atrial appendage inferiorly and the juxtaposed right atrial appendage here more superiorly. Uh, and if we reflect the great vessels uh, anteriorly, we can see the neck of the uh, atrial appendage. Here it is uh, coming from the right side uh, behind the vascular pedicle here over toward the left. You can see the neck of it, and this is the, the, the body of the appendage over here. This is superior vena cava. And so the position of the node tends to be more central here, more toward the left, instead of extending down around the side of the superior vena cava, the node often extends over into this area. So a little bit difference in position, but it's usually present. The atrioventricular node development is, is different from the sinus node. Uh, it develops from AV canal myocardium. Uh, if you think about the development of the heart in general, we start out with a primitive heart tube that has um, sort of primitive myocardium that's slow conducting, poorly contractile. Uh, and then uh, during week four and five, the chambers begin to balloon out of the outer curvature of the heart tube, the ventricles down here, atria up here. Uh, and they have a very different uh, character myocardium, uh, rapid conducting, uh, much more contractile myocardium, but the, uh, the heart tube itself maintains its primitive character in the uh, AV uh, canal area. Uh, in the interventricular ring here between the developing ventricles, this little ring of myocardium on the crest of the septum and then up into the outflow. Uh, this maintains its slow conducting, uh, poorly contractile nature. Again, TBX2 and 3, TBX3, as we saw in the sinus node is expressed here, which inhibits uh, formation of usual working myocardium and maintains its uh, primitive slow conducting character, uh, <clears throat> uh, inducing expression of uh, connexin 30.2, which is a slow conducting connexin, and also HCN4, as we saw before, because we know that uh, the AV node does have automaticity or potential automaticity. Whereas chamber myocardium expresses fast conducting connexins and other things like atri uh, atrial natriuretic peptide and other things like that. So the AV node develops here at the junction uh, between the AV canal myocardium, which forms the vestibule of, of the AV valves and the ventricular myocardium. Whereas the penetrating bundle and the bundle branches uh, are derived from ventricular myocardium, not from the AV canal myocardium. So they have separate origins. Um, 
there's a tongue of tissue, this, what we saw over here, extending down on the crest of the septum. That's what gives rise to the um, penetrating bundle and bundle branches. And it also expresses TBX3 uh, and initially has a relatively slow uh, conduction uh, capacity. This is a 3D reconstruction of a human embryo at Carnegie stage 15, which is uh, in the fifth week, uh, late fifth week, early sixth week. And we're looking in through the right atrium. Uh, this is the primary atrial septum, septum primum. This is the foramen ovale or osteum secundum back here. The white on the other side is the left atrial myocardium. This is this orifice here is the atrioventricular canal. Uh, and you can see this is the edge of the atrial septum. And this is the crest of the ventricular septum. This is right ventricular myocardium in blue, uh, left ventricular myocardium in orange. And this little cartoon up here shows you that there are two rings that we'll see again uh, as we uh, go through a uh, position of, of uh, conducting tissue. There's a ring that involves the free edge of the atrial septum and the crest of the ventricular septum shown here in blue. And then the other intersecting ring is the uh, orifice of the atrioventricular canal or the atrioventricular valves. That's this orifice here. It's a little foreshortened to show the part down into the ventricles. And the other ring is this ring here. And the AV node develops at the junction of those two rings. And, uh, the, most of the time, the AV node is the inferior or posterior node down here. Uh, so this is, these, these two are the uh, inferior and superior endocardial cushion. So this is AV canal myocardium here, ventricular myocardium there. So right at the junction is where the AV node develops. Uh, the tendon of Totoro will develop in this tissue over here. And so uh, the AV node is right at the junction of the AV canal myocardium with ventricular myocardium. And then the penetrating bundle and bundle branches develop from this little ridge, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, crest of the interventricular septum as it goes down. So they develop contiguously, but they come from different sources. Now, the anatomy of the node, um, this is just an opened right ventricle and right atrium, so we can look in and see this is the medial tricuspid leaflet, superior tricuspid leaflet up here with the medial papillary muscle or papillary muscle of the conus. Uh, and this is the septal band with its inferior ramus and superior ramus, and the moderator band here would come from this end of it. It's been cut. That's uh, where this little asterisk is. And you can see the arrow here is pointing to the membranous septum which is uh, right at the commissure between the medial and superior leaflets of the tricuspid valve. Uh, so there's where the membranous septum is. And we can construct the triangle of Koch here. Uh, this is the eustachian ridge where the tendon of Totoro is deep to this. Uh, and the other leg is the uh, annulus of the tricuspid valve here. Uh, and you could uh, put the base here through the coronary sinus. But what we're really interested in is this apex angle, which tells us where uh, the atrioventricular node is uh, most of the time. Uh, and then the penetrating bundle uh, goes through just below the membrane septum here to reach the, the, uh, the, the ventricles. This is a 3D reconstruction uh, uh, of uh, iodine stain specimen. That's the medial leaflet of the tricuspid valve, the annulus, the um, eustachian ridge over here. And if we make the myocardium transparent, you can see the node uh, and the penetrating bundle here. This is an iodine stain press, uh, specimen. This was prepared by Dr. Uh, Yamasaku, who's one of, is our fellow this year in the registry. You can see the AV node there. This is the penetrating bundle. Uh, and you can see that it comes through. This is the right bundle branch up here. You can see the left bundle branch on the other side. Um, here's the papillary muscle meconus, superior leaflet of the tricuspid valve there, medial leaflet down here with the commissure and the membranous septum right at that point. And you can see the penetrating bundle here comes through right below the membranous septum, very near the, the commissure here. Uh, and then uh, bifurcates uh, as soon as it gets into the ventricular uh, myocardium. And here you can see the, the septal band. Uh, here's the right bundle coming down the septal band and out what, what would be the, the uh, moderator band pulmonary outflow just for orientation is up here. So here we can see again the, the left bundle on the left side, and we're gonna go over to the left ventricle now to, to be able to see this directly from the left side. You can see the 
septal surface here of the left ventricle. And uh, this is the right coronary leaflet of the aortic valve and the non-coronary leaflet here on this side, uh, the commissure in between the right non-commissure um, is right there. And this is the, again, the right and the non-coronary leaflets with the trigone there and the membranous septum just below that. Uh, and you can see here the penetrating bundle coming up just under the membranous septum and then um, ramifying here on the left ventricular septal surface. And you can see through the septum here, you can see the right bundle on the other side. So the uh, histology, the AV node, uh, the compact AV node sits here just beside the central fibrous body of the heart. Uh, and it's separated by fibrous tissue from the ventricular septum below. There are transitional atrial uh, cells that lead into the, the node. It's again, fairly uh, weakly staining, uh, doesn't have a lot of contractile uh, apparatus in it. Uh, this is the penetrating bundle as we go down a little farther in uh, uh, Dr. Kate Carrion uh, produced most of the histology sections that we'll see today. Uh, so this is the penetrating bundle and you can see it's coming through the central fibrous body here. This is the right bundle branch as it's coming down in it's typically sub endocardial location on the right side. This is a trichrome stain and another uh, showing the bifurcation of the, uh, of the penetrating bundle here with the left bundle branch here. Here again, you can see the left bundle. You see that it's enclosed in a fibrous sheath. The blue uh, staining here is collagen fibrous tissue. This is a, a trichrome stain. And if we look closely at the cells in the um, left bundle, uh, you can see they look quite different from working myocardium. These are vacuolated, sort of foamy looking cells, contain a lot of glycogen, not much contractile apparatus, and a lot of dense fibrous tissue within and surrounding uh, the, uh, the, the bundle branch, separating it from the working myocardium underneath. Uh, this is um, a view into the atrium and ventricle from the right ventricle. We've cut away the anterior wall here just to show this large coniventricular ventricular septal defect here behind the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. Uh, so in, in most VSDs like this, whether it be an isolated VSD or tetralogy of Fallot or uh, transposition with a, a perimembranous type of VSD conoventricular defect like this, or, or a number of other relatively straightforward lesions, the conduction system is pretty consistently located again with the AV node at the triangle, at the apex of the triangle, and the penetrating bundle running on the inferior rim uh, of the defect more or less protected depending on whether there's a muscular inferior rim or whether it's just the continuity between the mitral and tricuspid valves forming the, the floor of the defect. But most of these are, are pretty consistent in location. Uh, this is a big inlet uh, or AV canal type of ventricular septal defect. We're looking at light coming through the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve and you can see the defect comes really almost all the way to the a diaphragmatic wall down here, and it includes the, the membranous septum. In these kinds of defects, the conduction system is usually down here on the inferior rim of the defect and then uh, comes up like this. Uh, other muscular defects like this that don't involve the membranous septum, here we can see this is a left ventricular view. Here again, you see the right non commissure with the membranous septum intact below that. Here, the penetrating bundle is likely to come up like this and on the superior rim of this type of defect. Here from the right side, here's the superior leaflet, the medial leaflet of the tricuspid valve. So the conduction system of the penetrating bundle is gonna come up like this. So depending on exactly where the inlet defect is and what's involved, the, the conduction system may be a little bit different. We know in AV canal defects, this is a big complete common AV canal. This is superior bridging leaflet, inferior bridging leaflet here right atrium. Uh, this is the, the BSD component, pulmonary outflow is up here. And if you remember the rings that we talked about before, here is the crest of the ventricular septum and the free edge of the atrial septum back here. So that's one ring. Then this is the ring uh, of the uh, AV annulus right here, which is a, a common annulus in, in complete common AV canal. And where they intersect, which is right here, is typically where the AV node develops. Uh, and you can see this is very close to the coronary sinus and then the penetrating bundle 
uh, goes under the inferior leaflet on uh, near the crest of the of the uh, muscular septum under this and uh, bifurcates uh, soon after entering the, the ventricular myocardium here. So common AV canal defects, straightforward common AV canal defects, the AV node tends to be much more inferior uh, and the, the, the penetrating bundle more inferior down here under the inferior leaflet. This is a, a corrected transposition where we know that uh, things can get a little more uh, unpredictable and a little more interesting if we take away the anterior wall here, you can, we can look inside. This is the left ventricle, which is right-sided, the mitral valve, medial mitral leaflet here. And this is the right atrium. We have atrioventricular discordance, of course. So here's the mitral annulus. Here's the eustachian ridge. So uh, we know that most of the time an inferior node does develop back here. Uh, and remember when we, when we looked before that, uh, the, that there's also the intersection of the ring superiorly. And so an anterior node can develop here as well. Uh, and it's usually here on the uh, atrial septum just below the junction with the free wall. So uh, there are two nodes here. Uh, and in corrected transposition, it's usually the anterior one that has the penetrating bundle. And the reason for that is that the inferior node, if we now look from the apex back toward the base, this is the medial mitral leaflet here. This is the right ventricular outflow tract. And the atrial septum is back here. The node is about right there. And you can see it's quite displaced. There is misalignment between the ventricular septum, which is over here, and the atrial septum, which is here, because of the left ventricular outflow tract. The pulmonary outflow tract is here in between them. And so the AV node sees the medial mitral leaflet here, doesn't have muscle to, or the inferior one, doesn't have muscle to run through. So most of the time, it doesn't have a penetrating bundle. Whereas the more anterior node up here uh, sees myocardium. And so the penetrating bundle typically comes through in front of or superior to the pulmonary valve running around like this. Here's a membranous ventricular septal defect here. And you can see it would come down on the left edge of that to, to bifurcate over here. Uh, so this is uh, the typical course uh, in corrected transposition. Uh, sometimes there is a penetrating bundle uh, from the inferior node. Sometimes both of them uh, connect and you can even get a sling of tissue around the ventricular septal defect. Now, with, when there's pulmonary atresia with corrected transposition, uh, things are a little bit different. So here again, we're looking into the right atrium. This is the fossa with the uh, secundum defect here, medial mitral leaflet here. So the, the annulus of the mitral valve is here. The eustachian ridge is over here. So the node would be about there. The inferior node would be about there. Now, if we reflect this mitral leaflet back, you can see that on the other side of it, there is ventricular septum because the pulmonary outflow ends up here. It's atretic. It, there's no uh, outflow tract from the left ventricle. So the node, which is about right here, sees muscle on the other side rather than just the medial mitral leaflet. And so it can penetrate here. And so very often when there's pulmonary atresia, it is the inferior node that actually has a penetrating bundle that comes through on the inferior uh, aspect of the ventricular septal defect. And then <clears throat> things get even more interesting in something like heterotaxy syndrome. Uh, we're, this is a, an asplenia type of heart. We're looking in uh, through the back of the right atrium. Uh, this is the little strand of atrial tissue that's often present in these hearts, similar to what we saw in the other heart with asplenia. Uh, this is the uh, atrioventricular annulus, the AV canal annulus. And you can see this is the inferior bridging leaflet, superior bridging leaflet. This is the crest of the ventricular septum down here. So the one ring would be here, atrial septum to ventricular crest this way. And the other intersecting ring would be like this, the AV annulus. And where they join is right here. So we would expect an inferior node down here at the lower aspect of this part of the atrial septum, and very likely a superior node or an anterior node appear at the junction between the AV ring and the uh, atrial septal, ventricular septal ring on the other side. And in fact, that's often what happens in asplenia type of heterotaxy. Both nodes actually often have penetrating bundles. They can be separate or they can actually form a sling. Now we're looking from the right ventricle. Here's that same 
little bit of atrial septum. Here you can see the edge of the ventricular septum. Whoops. Uh, this is the um, inferior bridging leaflet, superior bridging leaflet here. So the superior node uh, can send a penetrating bundle this way, the inferior node this way, and they can sometimes meet and form a sling of tissue which, which can result in, in uh, uh, arrhythmias. This is just looking at it from the left ventricular side. This is a, a D-loop uh, type of, of ventricular arrangement. So um, those are some of the things, lots of other things can happen, but uh, those are some of the things that can happen. The Purkinje system uh, develops really from ventricular myocardium. Uh, from the trabecular myocardium, which is the initial type of myocardium that gets formed uh, in the heart tube as the chambers are beginning to balloon out from it. Uh, because there is no coronary system, the nutrition has to come from diffusion from chamber blood for oxygen and, and other uh, nutrients. So uh, very thin trabeculae uh, get formed into the cavity uh, and uh, these are rapid conducting um, cells. The, these express uh, connexin 40, connexin 43. And then as the, there's a shift uh, in the phenotype of myocardium that's produced to make compact myocardium, uh, the rapidly conducting cells get excluded to the tips of the um, trabeculae and the, the compact myocardium expresses a different connexin. So the rapid conducting uh, ventricular conduction, peripheral ventricular conduction system, the Purkinje system really is at the apex of the trabeculae that form uh, down uh, in the ventricles. Uh, <clears throat> and um, this is a, an iodine stained heart as well. This is a rabbit heart, not a human heart, but just to illustrate the, the, the uh, Purkinje system that can develop uh, uh, down in the ventricles uh, that the bundle branches, of course, bring the, the impulse down and then the Purkinje fibers uh, distributed around to the myocardium, synchronizing the ventricular contraction. And these cells, uh, the Purkinje cells, again, look very different from working myocardium, which we see down here. They're much bigger, uh, vacuolated, lots of glycogen uh, in them, not very much contractile component. Uh, and they're immediately under the endocardium, which you can see up here. So these are typical uh, Purkinje fibers. So uh, in summary, then the cardiac conduction system develops from diverse precursors. The sinus node comes from sinus venosus myocardium, the AB node from AB canal myocardium, the penetrating bundle and bundle branches from proximal ventricular myocardium, and then the Purkinje fibers from the trabecular myocardium that develops down in the ventricle. But these have many uh, common elements in their gene regulatory networks. Uh, we know, uh, we saw TBX3, we saw that they typ typically uh, express HCN4, they often have automaticity. Um, and there was a, a recent paper uh, using single cell RNA, se RNA sequencing that showed that there were a number of other elements that uh, people didn't really know were expressed in the conduction uh, system that are in common in, in all the, the, the uh, cardiac conduction system. Um, there's a fairly consistent location of the conduction system in more straightforward, simple uh, kinds of congenital heart defects, as Dr. Del Nido pointed out earlier, but uh, can be quite variable and unpredictable in more complex congenital heart defects. And uh, the, the uh, objective here is to provide much more data uh, what we know about the conduction system is based on examination of relatively few hearts, as Dr. Del Nido pointed out. Uh, and so what we need is much more data on this so we have a, a, a better idea of, of where the conduction system is in these complex defects that are now uh, being operated more and more. So thank you.